Hello and welcome, this is Ruth and today I have the most beautiful collection of dies and tools and card, all sorts of things that I want to show you that have been sent to me by Spellbinders and I'm going to make lovely floral things with them. So if you know me at all, you know I absolutely love the garden, I love flowers and this just really, really floats my boat. I just can't wait to show you what I've got and then get started and make some things because as I said, I love flowers, I love three dimensional items. And this is Susan's uh, Garden Ultimate Toolkit. I'll open that up and show you. This is the little flower moulding tray. And then I've got some other bits and pieces here. I've also got Susan's Garden Speciality cardstock. And then I've got five little die sets here as well. So if you think you're going to like this kind of thing, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. You'll see lots more because... As I said, I love flowers, I love creating all this sorts of thing, and I'd definitely be back with more. So, inside this box, first of all, you'll see we've got an all-in-one tool. So this actually goes along with these little pieces in here. So we've got three different sizes of ball tool in there. I think you'd see those better if I moved everything else over. So three different sizes of ball tool, and then there's a leaf veining tool and a loop tool. And I'm just going to show you how these attach, but then as I go through the video, I will show you uh, how to use them or how I use them anyway. So it's double ended, as you can see, and that saves you sort of fumbling about looking for bits and pieces. You can have one end in there and then you can have the other one on the other side. That's a ball tool for embossing and all sorts of things. And then this is the leaf veining tool and I'm just going to pop that in there and there you are. So that's all ready to go and then I'll show you the tweezers. So I have beautiful reverse tweezers here and this is something I've already um, cut out. Well you know I couldn't wait. <laughs> so after you would use the ball tool then you would shape the little petals with these. You can curl them around, you can turn them back, all sorts of things. But they're very very good even for holding bits and pieces together. So if I had two pieces of uh, die cuts that I had glue in the center and I wanted to hold that I could just put my reverse tweezers on and that would hold it firmly in place as well. There's a lovely little pair of tweezers here which you can just pick things up with and hold them and have them uh, ready to glue together so those are really really good for that as well. Then we've got scissors lovely little scissors to go along with that and that's everything in there but there's a beautiful little bag for it as well and I've also got some things inside this. So this is the foam mat, this is the leaf mat, and this is a lovely little non-stick mat that I can glue on or that I can use my alcohol markers on. And it saves my desk and it's really, really handy because it's small, portable, and you're not going to be fumbling about everywhere looking for a big mat or something like that to use. So you can see I haven't even used these yet. I'm actually just about to have a little quick chat with Susan herself uh, on a FaceTime call. So I'll be able to tell you more about all of that later. There's the card. You can cut these out in white card or you can actually cut them out in coloured as well. So all sorts of options there. Now, I have got the die sets that are from Susan's Bo Nature's Botanical Garden. And this is the latest release. They're absolutely beautiful. This one has a beautiful big uh, garden pot. This is azalea and garden pot with ladybugs. So you've got the, the actual pot itself and then the bits and pieces. I should show you this. I just couldn't wait. So I went ahead and I've cut lots and lots of bits and pieces out. Started to colour them and all sorts of things. And uh, I'll come back to that later and make some more. But this is the azalea. On the other side here, we've got all of the dyes that make up the hydrangea. Then I have also got Forsythia and that reminds me my mum's garden always had Forsythia because I planted a big big row of it down one side the full length of the garden to hide a wall at one stage and it was absolutely beautiful whenever all the yellow blossoms came out in the springtime because the blossoms come out before the leaves come out that's a really really beautiful plant. Then we've got the landscape rose and who doesn't love a rose? And then we've got a flowering quince and my mother-in-law had that in her front garden and it was really, really beautiful. I think its other name might be Japonica, but anyhow, it's really, really beautiful. 
So I am really looking forward to uh, making all of these. My mother actually had two huge hydrangea plants in her front garden and they were pale blue and absolutely stunning and all the neighbours used to stop and look at them and say how beautiful they were and then we used to cut bunches off them and pass them around all of our fence as well. Now all of that and then I've also got this little uh, leaf mould tray so you can see here there are different sizes of apertures or whatever in here and of course I had to go ahead I've already made a little azalea and while you have the glue on that and you want to hold it you can pop that into whatever is the most appropriate size and just let it sit there while the glue dries and you know you're going to have it uh, in the correct position. Now all of that is absolutely beautiful I've already as I said I've already cut out lots of these dies I've been working on this one and I have dies cut out flat which I then can colour I've actually cut some of them out in white and then some of them out in colour and then I went ahead with another die into the centre of this and I've made myself a little stencil as well. So I'm going to do a little more die cutting and then I'll show you how I've used these tools and whatnot to assemble some of these. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do because I'm just loving it. I'm going to start off with the azalea and garden pot and the little ladybugs. And this large die here cuts out this shape and it removes the little oval from the centre there. And you can use that for something else. Or you can even just put a piece of card in behind that, uh, in behind this part and cut that out in brown. And that would be your soil then for your azalea if you're going to have that showing. You could have a little stem and have a little standard plant in it. But uh, I'll probably be covering mine up and that doesn't really matter. So then we've got some other pieces here. You can see this one is the little saucer and then... This one cuts out this part here, which actually glues onto the rim of the pot and this little part here, which glues onto the saucer as well. And that just gives a little bit of dimension to those. So you can actually put those on with 3D foam pads or you can just glue them on the way they are. And I'm just going to glue them on quite flat. As I said earlier there, I used one of these leaves into the centre of a piece of card and I'm going to use that as a little stencil. So I'm just going to offset it slightly here and stencil that and then I'm going to use it over there as well. So there's lots of different ways of using this little die and I'll show you that on another one or two of them in a second or two. But this is really, really easy and it just gives a little bit of uh, something different to your card. I've just gone in again with a brush without adding any more ink onto it and gone around the edges here just to take that really really stark look off the ivory card and that looks really really beautiful with that little leaf stencil on it but you could also do it in a different way and I'm just going to show you how I've done it here I have cut out some more of the leaves in this colour just the same self colour and I'm going to glue them on here and here and that'll give a lovely little embossed effect and you can keep it plain coloured like this or you could even uh, do it the way I've done in the next card. So I'll go ahead, add all of these pieces on here and then glue these on and I'll be right back. I've already gone ahead and made another one anyway because I just couldn't wait to get started. You can see this is just a bit of scrap card because I even tried to stencil on the back just to see what that would look like. So what I actually did was take, go to this stage with this one and then I took my little ink pad and I swiped it right across and that's how I got the darker areas here and here. And then I went in with the brush and did in the backgrounds of it here 
So swiped across here and the leaves and here and then with my little brush into these areas here and then I added some green as well just to give it a kind of a an aged mossy look because I want to kind of go from a fresh clean to a sort of in between and then a different one all together again. I've gone on a little step or two with this one and I've taken the 5x7 card blank and added two of the die cuts from the Timeless 5x7 car card front die set by Spellbinders and I've just kept it self-coloured because I think that's quite elegant looking and then I put this little pot on top on 3D foam pads. So I have actually cut out the leaves this time in the same colour but I've added the colouring onto them with alcohol markers. So you can do this with whatever alcohol markers you have. Uh, you'll just need a lighter shade and a darker shade of green. I'm using Nouveau from Tonic and I'm using the Bamboo Leaf and Pea Pod and I'm using the thicker end and all I'm doing is laying down some green here and going up into the leaf just a little bit there. Now you can also see that I've kept the centre of that green. Um, really with that being a shrub you could have that brown but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Here we go with the lighter one and just go right over the dark one and that blends it out. Right out like that. And then if you want any deeper shading you can come back in again and add some of the darker brown, the darker green. And you could also add brown to that uh, stem part there but this is what, what I'm doing on this one. You'll probably see as I make these I tend to use the flowers and the flower dyes and things quite um, simplistically at times and then at other times I really go all out and uh, try to get them very very realistic looking. The reason why I do them in different ways is because I like people to realise that they are achievable. If you're just a beginner and you don't really want to or even if you, you aren't a beginner and you just don't have time don't think that you have to spend absolutely ages with these little flower dies because they're absolutely gorgeous if you just uh, do a minimum of work to them as well. I, at this point I think I'll actually just show you one that I have gone all out on because in between the last video clip and this one I've actually done this beautiful 3D one with that, that little um, embossed and coloured flower pot there. But for this one we're going for something just a little bit simpler. I've got my little foam pad here and my little leaf mat and this one here is absolutely perfect for uh, colouring on because I, you can wipe that off again and there we are. So I've got the ball tool and I'm just going to take the leaves and just go over the back of them just to mould the fibres just a little bit and that gives a little bit of shape without actually going too far with it. It's really just because I've got 300 GSM card in that and I want to make sure that it's um, quite pliable. So now I'm going to move it over to the leaf pad, put it face downwards and with this part of the tool I'm going to just come in here right down there, down the centre of each leaf and right into the stem. Then I'm going to take it over the other way and fold that upwards just for the meantime, just like that. You can use pan pastels or you can use whatever you like to go down here. I'm actually just using the broad tip of the alcohol marker and it just accentuates that little vein down the centre of the leaves. You don't even have to do that if you don't feel like it, but uh, it does give a lovely little bit of dimension onto it as well. So now I'm just going to go ahead with this on the, on the front side and do some more veining on the leaves, taking care each time not to cross over that centre point, point where the main vein is down the middle of the leaf there. And then when we get that done, I'm going to shape it just a little bit more with my tweezers. But don't forget, you can actually just leave this plain or you could just put it on whatever way you like. It doesn't have to have all this detail. I like it for this, but um, I'm just going to curl some of these leaves over a little bit and Around the side. Now because I have actually uh, coloured the leaves from cream from ivory onto green and I haven't done the back of them I'm going to turn these over. Each way that I turn them I'm going to make sure that the underside isn't showing because uh, it's sort of ivory and I haven't coloured both sides but 
uh, on this other one here I actually used green card the whole way through there and uh, it didn't matter if it turned over or not so I've got that and then now if you want you can go ahead and add some crystal glaze like I've done in this one but for this one I'm going just a little bit simpler and I'm going to add a little framework of these leaves right around here so I'll be doing the same thing with the rest of them and gluing them in here and you'll be able to see just how they go. I've made a little framework there then and that's where I'm going to add the little flowers so I have already got one ready and this time I'm going to make them just a little bit more open than the one I did before because that's very very dimensional and obviously would need a box this would probably as well but it won't be just as thick so I have got the two petals here two sets of petals and again I'm just going to do what I did with the green leaves I am going to take the broader end of an alcohol marker this time I'm using wild thistle and sugar lilac sp sorry spring lilac and I've got some lilac card there so I am going to take the broad end and again put some shading into the centre with the darker one. Now again you could actually just use a plain piece of card here, sort of cream or white or whatever and go ahead and colour that completely but I've started off with the lilac. It makes it a little bit darker but it also means that the underside of the leaves whenever they turn up, or sorry the petals, whenever they turn up um, that's also lilac. So blend that out with the lighter colour and then if you do happen to want it deeper again in the centre just go back in with uh, the darker pen again but that should give enough you can see you could actually just leave it like that but I like to sort of blend it out and then the underside as you can see there is slightly lighter I'm going to do that with all of my flowers I'll probably do uh, well I made seven on the last one I'll go for seven this time. If I have any extra, then I can just use them on something else. Now I'm just going to add a couple of little dots up at the top of each of the petals with the pointed edge of the darker pen. And that just makes it a little bit more realistic. But don't worry if you don't feel like doing that. The flowers look really, really good without that as well. And now I'm just going to take this over to my foam mat, take the medium sized ball tool and give these petals a little bit of shaping as well. I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this one and then I will add a little bit of uh, dimension as well by coming back on here once I've turned them over to the front and I've got the smaller loop tool and I'm going to draw the petals in from these edges here so you'll see little parts here where the petal comes in and if you just draw down from there it gives a little bit of shaping again there's lots and lots of dimension going on so if you're not comfortable doing that, just leave it. It's absolutely fine. Now, lastly, I'm going to sort of take the petals and turn it this way and that way and give a little bit of um, shaping to them. And this time it doesn't matter if I turn the petals backwards or forwards because they're lilac on the same on the both sides. And all I'm doing is giving a little bit more realism to the little flowers. And now I can go ahead and glue both of these together. Now I don't want to rain my little mat so I actually have a very old one that I don't mind getting glue on and I'm going to put glue on the underside of the three petal part and set it right on top there. You see just just like that. And then I'm going to press right down into the centre. So I really should have my smaller ball tool for this if I want it narrower and, and, keep, and these more bunched up. But I'm using the medium one at the minute. And I'm going to take this moulding tray and pop this into, uh, well I'm going to put it into the one inch one. Because I'm actually going to make this one quite a lot flatter on the card than I've made these ones. These ones are very, very bunched up and I love that. But I'm going to make these ones a lot smaller. So now I've got the little die that has cut this out. I'm going to snip into the centre of each of these. If I wasn't on camera, I would actually 
probably cut those in three, make two little snips down them, but I don't fancy my chances of getting that right on camera. So I'm just going to cut it in two and that's fine. It's really just to separate those little filaments up a bit because that's as narrow as a die will go, but uh, you can actually make these a lot narrower again. So let's go with this and take my broad nib of the darker pen and just give some colouring on there. Turn them over and do the same on there. Now you'll see at this end there's a little flat piece. I'm just going to grab that with my tweezers, run a line of glue along here and then curl this up. Just roll it up like that, hold that together and slip the tweezers out. Now you can open these up and that is the part that will go into the centre of your little flower. I like to leave that and don't add it until the very end because uh, I think whenever I get the flowers placed up on top of the card then I know where that's going to go and look best. So I've actually gone ahead because I want this a lot more open looking than the last one. I've put two flowers down already and you can see here these are very very tightly packed. This one's going to be a bit looser and I'm going to just uh, put these on, across the card in among those leaves there. So there are actually seven flowers on that, but I've just added one down at the bottom here and you can see it's much more open than the other. I also nipped the leaves apart here, so I put two in there and a little one in here as well. The soft sort of stenciling look looks really lovely against the uh, beautiful self-coloured background in that one, I think anyway, but you can let me know what you think too. And there's the other one, I'll show you that in more detail here. Lot, a lot more flowers. It's a lot fuller because they're all bunched up together there. And then this lovely little uh, sort of faux embossing and then inked on top. So you can see, you can actually feel the pattern on that there. And that's really, really nice too. I've used crystal glaze. I think I already said that on the leaves there. This is a little bit more simple. But then I've gone back to this little pot and I'm not actually going to make a card this time with the azalea on that. But I just wanted to show you how I decided it would look really, really nice with a kind of glazed effect on it. So I took the crystal glaze, that's this Nouveau crystal glaze from Tonic, and I just brushed it very, very lightly on top just to give that lovely finish off it. It was nice the way it was, sort of this kind of effect, but I thought the glaze would be nice too. And I'm going to hold on to that because obviously when I'm making these things up, I get lots of little pieces left over and have lots of things I could be doing with them. And I might actually even add that onto one of the flowers that I come to do next. Whenever I started this video, I fully intended to do a couple of different flowers in the one video, but I think it might be better if I just uh, stick to one in each video. So this is the azalea one, and then you can come back and look at the others. I'll have them linked down below in the description of this video as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this and do come back and watch those others because they're really, really beautiful. I think the next one that I have is the landscape rose. And I, th I think it's really lovely too. The dyes are all absolutely beautiful. So don't forget my affiliate links will be down below in the description as well. And if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you'll be kept up to date when any of these come along. So thank you very, very much for watching in the meantime. And I hope to see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.